Hello everyone. So today I would like to talk about triggers in the build pipelines in the Azure uh, DevOps projects and explain you the benefits of it and you know maybe show you a way of to how you can profit from those triggers in your own projects. How you can automate even more. Now um, as you may see I'm showing you right now my so structure of my git repository where I have uh, data and source folders plus the readme which we are going to ignore for the moment. Uh, the data folder has my data CSV and the source has CS class. So the whole idea is that we have different pipelines managing different scenarios. So in a case of a data, I would like to process maybe the CSV files and update my SQL Server database, let's say. Um, under the source folder, I might have, um, you know, my, my C Sharp classes or my JavaScript code or TypeScript code, whatever something that I would like to maybe build, but definitely prepare as an artifact and deliver it uh, to my release pipeline. Now, of course, I'm not going to do and, and build multiple scenarios here. I just want to show you how you can uh, manage those uh, scenarios, how you can uh, create uh, triggers for yourself so that you can uh, manage your pipelines automatically and differently. Now, the first thing what I want to do is I would like to have um, you know specific pipeline maybe for data right so how am i going to do this i'm going to um, well navigate to the pipelines i already have tab prepared and i'm going to click new pipeline now i'm going to use a classic editor to do this and i'm going to say that my default branch is going to be develop i'm going to start with an empty job and i'm going to just name this one like data prepare something like this doesn't matter um, and for the agent pool i'm going to say i'm going to use a self-hosted because microsoft killed my uh killed my uh free tier so i have to uh, submit some form doesn't matter now the data prepare i you know created this pipeline right now it doesn't do anything so it doesn't do anything it doesn't start at all so what I want to do is I want to make it a bit smarter and I would like to enable triggers by going to this tab and I'm going to check this enable continuous integration and immediately a couple of additional options showed up and the first one is uh, branch filters so as you know um, I can have multiple branches in my git repository and in this case I will only be running uh, this pipeline automatically when the develop branch is being changed. I can specify more branches. I can say, okay, this is main branch, but I really want to focus only on develop one. I can also, of course, exclude one. So please, uh, you know, exclude everything but, but this one. Now, which is definition right now of it. Now, this means that every time when the changes happens on a developer branch, this build is going to be triggered. Now, of course, I want to specify this a bit more. I said I want to do this, uh, I want to run this build pipeline only when my data is being changed. Now, my data is in my data folder. So every time when the, when the content below my data folder is being changed, please run this pipeline. This is what I want to tell to my pipeline. So how am I telling this? I'm going to use this path filters and I'm going to click add, which is going to include a form very similar to the develop, uh, to, the, to the branch filters above. So how am I specifying this? The data is right here, folder is called data. And then I'm going to say everything uh, under, uh, beneath the data folder, any changes that happens beneath data folder, please, uh, you know, uh, run this pipeline. So that's that's essentially it. Nothing, nothing else, nothing more. Now, what this means, uh, if I go here, this this pipeline haven't run yet at all. And what this means, if if I just go ahead to my data repository, if I change a content of it, this should um, this should trigger my build. So as you may see, I'm on a develop branch, and I'm going to click edit button. And I'm able to change the content here. So I'm going to say, uh, I don't know, uh, one, two, three. Doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. And I'm going to press the commit button. My branch name is develop. Let's say that the message is, I'm going to just add something and press the commit button. Now, 
um, as I'm working directly on the on the DevOps, this is not just committed, so the message is misleading. It's also pushed um, to the remote repository. It should be, meaning that my pipeline should actually be triggered. And as you may see, it was it ran for eight seconds. It was really really quick while I was talking. So let me just do it one more time, and I'm going to change it here. I'm going to say four five, six, and I'm going to press the commit button, press this, and now you see something is happening, load one new run, here it is. So every time when things is being changed on this subfolder, I'm going to create a new run, and this is going to, you know, create uh, everything what I want to do. So if I wanted to create uh, some specific scenarios, which is going to um, import the things in the SQL Server database. I would probably add here certain steps, you know, transformation, whatnot, and then I would process this file. However, I'm able to do this separately. Now, what else do I have on the on the triggers? I can also use uh, a scheduled trigger. Now, a scheduled trigger is very useful if I want to execute certain action, um, you know, at a given time. So if I press this thing here, I can choose the days where I want this pipeline to run. Um, I want to let's 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 for instance do this. If I change my data, uh, or if I haven't changed my data, this this really uh, depends on this checkbox right here. Only scheduled build if source or pipeline has changed. Let's say I don't want to do it. I I will do it every time. I will do it every Sunday, two hours zero minutes UTC from the develop branch. So this means that this pipeline is going to run every time, every Sunday at two o'clock UTC, and it will do its own actions, whatever it's necessary, uh, whatever I specified, and you know, no mistake, it will just do its job. So this is a second trigger which you can, which you can use. Uh, I find this trigger very useful for, uh, for instance, for the integration tests. Uh, or coded unit tests, uh, coded UI tests. Um, let's say that your integration tests are really working with the real database and creating massive amount of data. Uh, it, it is possible that its run uh, is going to take more than, a, than an hour or two, and you really don't want it to be part of your daily actions. You want it to push it either outside of working hours or even on a weekend. Depend, depends really how much does it take. And scheduled build is, is a great example how you can how you can utilize this. Uh, the last guy here is a build completion, which I'm not using that much because this uh, this thing uh, can actually trigger another build when this one completes. Now you can specify the triggering build. You know I have it here, uh, a couple of them, um, but it, it does something which is chaining of the builds, and this is something where I I kind of lose. A bit of a transparency because uh, you really don't want to prepare things here and there at least not in the build pipelines I, I tend to avoid this as much as i can but you know in this case i specify my criteria this works completely fine as far as i saw now i created a lot of tabs uh, now if i go to the files and if i go to data and if i switch to main branch for instance you know main branch actually doesn't have anything uh, but if I, I, if I go to branches and if I, let's say from the develop branch, I'm going to create, oopsie, uh, branches, I go to develop branch and I'm going to say new branch, I'm going to say feature blah. And from the develop, right? I create this, this branch and if I go to the files uh, in this feature blah, and if I change a file here and if I add, I don't know, seven, eight nine press commit button uh nothing is going to happen uh, let me just stay here uh nothing is going to happen in my data prepare because it's filtering out only on develop and no other branches so this is this is really uh this is really good means it it, it does actually work now i said that i would like to trigger this also on the scheduled this is fine i'm going to save this so now I have every time when the data changes or every Sunday at two, uh, two o'clock UTC time, I'm going to prepare my data. That's, that's the job. 
Now for the build pipeline, I can actually do exactly the same things. I can go to the build pipeline here and I can create new pipeline, choose the classic editor. Uh, let's say my default branch is develop and I can go for empty job. Um, and the only thing is I'm going to say code prep or whatever. It's, it's not really a smart name. Let me just, uh, I think it's, it's, it's going to say code build. This would be actually a bit, bit better. And uh, I'm going to enable continuous integration, same as I did before. The only thing here is, uh, let me just first uh, save this. Um, the only thing what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say source and then uh, put the wildcard so that everything under source, uh, every time that it's being changed, uh, I would like to run. I will not specify any scheduled build for this one. I don't care. And uh, because I'm, I'm convinced that my code is always going to be uh, updated on the right time. Now, uh, maybe it's time to test it as well. So code build, I'm going to go to my fancy class and I'm going to say var e equals 10, something like this, commit, not on a feature. Oh, I was actually on the wrong branch. So let me go on a develop branch, leave. I'm going to say this and I'm going to press commit, save. And now this should trigger my build pipeline and it did. So just now it was running. Uh, ah, yeah, this is the, the problem that I have uh, from Microsoft. So I have to use my self-hosted pipeline very well. Thank you, Microsoft, for this. Let me go to this same magic as I did it before. Uh, let's say var, well, this is actually, this will work just fine. I'm just changing the content. Let's see. Okay. When you run is here very well. Now it will uh, be successful. I hope so. Very well. Good. So, um, I hope that this was beneficial enough that you can now understand the usage of triggers in the DevOps pipelines and that you can apply them to your project. So thank you very much. Talk to you again.